Sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord, all the earth. Beloved, it's good to have you all with us today. Um, it's sunny. I, I can't tell you. I don't mind the cold. I don't mind the snow. I mind the cloud, cloudy days and the fogginess. I, 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 I do much better when it's sunny. So uh, we give thanks for this. Um, we have a lot of things going on. We're starting getting ready for Liz. I'm going to turn uh, the announcements over to Stacy in a minute. But wanted to remind you that on the back table, there are all kinds of different devotionals for Lent. If there's one that appeals to you, take it. It's yours to keep. Um, there should be something that appeals to a wide variety of people. Um, there's everything from a lectionary or a thematic to anything in between. So please feel free to take one and keep it. Um, these are there for you. Also, um, prepare, because next week is when everything starts for Lent. It's not this week, it's next week. But we have been invited to join our friends at St. John UCC um, for their Ash Wednesday service, our Ash Wednesday service, we do this together, which means since it's at their place, I'm preaching. That's how it works. But if you're hungry and are thinking, well, 7 o'clock, how am I going to get dinner in and get the dishes done and everything? Come early, because from 4 until 7, they are serving their baked potato dinner. So we can eat together and then worship together. It's all part of the same service. And now I'm going to turn pancake supper, supper things over to one of our co-chairs, Stacy. Pancake suppers next Tuesday evening. Uh, so hopefully you guys are selling your tickets. Um, if you need more tickets, uh, you can see Bob or Lisa for more tickets if you need them. Um, next Sunday after church, we are going to be setting up the fellowship hall for all the tables and getting everything all set for <coughs> Tuesday. So if you are able to stay after church, many hands make a light work. Oh, and the sign-ups are still back there, and there's still some empty spots. <laughs> <laughs> and lastly, there is a get-well card for our friend Barb Edmund. It's on the back table, that's just right outside of the sanctuary. Make sure you sign it. Um, Barb is in the hospital right now. She's feeling, she told me she's 100% better than she was um, last week at this time. But she's still, they're still trying to get the bowel obstruction under control. And they would hope, they're hoping to not have to do surgery. So she says she's feeling better, but still in the hospital. So um, she is fine with visitors for a short period of time. So if you want to visit, drop by. It is okay. She's at the clinic. Any other announcements that need to be made this morning. Then let us prepare our hearts and minds to be God together. God gathers us together in this place. Let us sing praise to the Lord. God heals the brokenhearted and binds up our wounds. Let us sing praise to the Lord. God lifts the downtrodden and casts out wickedness. Let us worship God. Let's sing together our gathering hymn number 610, full for a thousand tongues to sing. <laughs>
Jesus, fully human and fully divine. We celebrate the divinity of Christ, but we often forget that Jesus was human too. We share humanity with Jesus, and yet are slow to participate in the story. We witness his baptism, but forget the power of baptism in our life as a community. We witness him calling disciples, but fail to hear him calling us to action. We witness him healing those in need, but forsake those who need us. And so we pray for transformation, praying together. God among us, forgive us when we assume you are far from us, and when we fail to recognize our power in your ongoing ministry. We lament that so many feel forsaken. We grieve for all the wounds not healed, actions not taken, Paul's not answered. Teach us to participate in your mission in the world, to remember our baptism, hear the call on our lives, and help those who are sent our way. Transform us so that we may be more like Christ. Amen. God is among us. We have been baptized into Christ, who is gracious and merciful slow to anger, and abounding in steadfast love. In Christ, we are forgiven. Amen. <clears throat> Oh, 
calling them by all by name, because he is great in strength, mighty in power. Not one is missing. Why do you say, O Jacob, and assert, O Israel, my way is hidden from the Lord, and my right is disregarded by my God? Have you not known? Have you not heard? The Lord is everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He does not faint or grow weary. He is understanding and unsearchable. He gives power to the faint and strengthens the powerless. Even youths will faint and be weary, and the young will fall exhausted. But those who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Our second reading today comes from the Gospel of Mark. Listen once again for God's word to us. As soon as they had left the synagogue, they entered into the house of Simon and Andrew with James and John. Now, Simon's mother-in-law was in bed with a fever, and they told him about her at once. Jesus came and took her by the hand and lifted her up. Then the fever left her and she began to serve them. That evening, at sunset, they brought to him all who were sick or possessed by demons, and the whole city was gathered around the door. And Jesus cured many who were sick with various diseases, and cast out many demons, and he would not permit the demons to speak because they knew him. In the morning, well, it was still very dark, Jesus got up and went out to a deserted place where he prayed. And Simon and his companions hunted for him. When they found him, they said to him, Everyone is searching for you. He answered, Let us go on to the neighboring towns, so that I may proclaim the message there also, for that is what I came to do. And he went out throughout all of Galilee, proclaiming the message in their synagogues and casting out demons. The grass withers and the flowers fade, but the word of our Lord endures forever. I'd like to invite my young friends to come up for a children's story. And this one is a story about healing or being sick. And it's one of my favorites. It was a Caldecott, it was a, a Caldecott <coughs> metal blender, so that means it's got some really neat illustrations. But this is a favorite. This is called A Sick Day. For Amos McGee. Hi, Reem. Hi, Clayton. This is a sick day for Amos McGee. I want you to watch this balloon, okay? This Amos McGee was an early riser. Every morning when the alarm clock clanged, he swung his legs out of bed and swapped his pajamas for a fresh pressed uniform. Oh, look, he's got bunny slippers. <laughs> it's kind of fun. He would wind his watch and set it on water to boil, saying to the sugar bowl, a spoonful for my opium, please, and two for my teacup. Belly full and ready for the workday, he'd amble out the door. Every day, Amos waited for the number five bus. Next stop, City Zoo, the bus driver would call. 6 a.m., right on time, he'd reply. Amos had a lot to do at the zoo, but he always made time to visit his good friends. He was at the zoo. A very little elephant. He would play chess with the elephant, who thought and thought before making the move. He'd run races with the tortoise.
been sick and not been able to go to school? It's not fun, is it? No. Meanwhile, at the zoo, the animals waited for their friend. The elephant arranged the pawns and polished his castles. The tortoise stretched his legs and limbered up. The penguin sat patiently all by himself. The rhinoceros worried that his allergies were worsening. The owl perched atop his tall stack of storybooks, scratching his head with concern. Where is Amos? The animals wondered. Oh. <laughs> Later that day, all the animals are leaving the zoo. What do you think they're going to do? Their friend? Yeah. They're waiting for the bus. Oh, they all got on the bus. Oh my goodness, they kind of filled that bus. You know what, I, I can't agree with you. I don't know how the elephant fit in the bus and how it didn't give it flat tires. <laughs> Hooray, my good friends are here. <coughs> Look, they came to this Amos was sick. The elephant prepared a game of chess. Amos thought and thought before making a move. I'm too tired to run races today, said Amos to the tortoise. Let's play hide and seek instead. The tortoise hid inside the shell. <coughs> Amos hid under the covers. Amos yawned. I could use a nap. The penguin sat quietly, keeping Amos's feet warm. That's you, Amos woke with a sleep. The rhinoceros was ready with a handkerchief. <laughs> I'm beginning to feel much better. Thank you, said Amos to his friends. He swung his legs out of bed. Perhaps we'll all share. Amos wound his alarm clock. It's getting late, he said. After all, we have a morning bus to catch. So Amos said good night to the elephant, and good night to the tortoise, and good night to the penguin, and good night to the rhinoceros, and good night to the owl, who, knowing that Amos was afraid of the dark, read a story aloud before turning up the light. And then they all, look at that, they all nap together. And the, the pig was not sleeping. The pig was not sleeping. He's watching that balloon. Do you ever not sleep? I, I like to sleep. I do. I like to sleep. So I, I, I like to fall asleep. Yeah, you like that one too? You know what? You boys can take that back to your chair if you'd like to look at it. You're going to hear a story about Jesus healing somebody and about visiting somebody who was sick. She was um, the mother in law of one of his friends. <laughs> Simon, Andrew, James, and John had marveled at Jesus' authority over unclean spirits after the exorcism in the synagogue. Yet Jesus keeps reminding them, the kingdom of heaven is drawing near. Now, as all of the friends head home after worship, they arrive at Simon and Andrew's family home. In this short passage, Jesus demonstrates in three short scenes what it means to live into the kingdom of God. As they arrived at the home, there was something quiet. Simon's mother-in-law was in bed with fever. Her son-in-law and his brother told Jesus all about her, about what's going on, about what's how she's feeling right now. And before Jesus does anything else, he goes to her. He touches her. He takes her by the hand, and her fever leaves her. Jesus realizes that it's difficult to hear the good news of the kingdom of heaven until basic needs are met. The interesting detail here is that she immediately begins to serve her guests showing incredible hospitality. The particular Greek word used for service in this passage is the same word that Mark uses to describe the angels waiting on Jesus 
in the wilderness. In fact, the, the Greek, Greek word diakno in Mark's Gospel is reserved for describing the actions of the women who follow Jesus. Diakonos. Sounds an awful lot like deacons. <laughs> this was the work that Mark used to describe for the service that the women in Jesus' circle performed for Jesus. Simon's mother-in-law lives out her love and thanksgiving and acts of hospitality. I almost imagine that Simon's mother-in-law is sort of like Martha, a person who gets great um, desire, or gets great fulfillment from serving. And so she is desirous of being able to do the work that means so much to her. Simon's mother-in-law's response to healing was not to bask in the miracle, nor was it really, as we all know when we've had a fever, a, a slow return to strength. No, her service is a response of gratitude that shows rather than tells that she's experienced God's shalom in a powerful way. She's able to return to who she was. Now, we've talked a lot about the compressed time in Mark's Gospel. So this entire passage occurs in one Sabbath day, less, again, less than 24 hours. It happens fast. The passage continues, and the crowds had waited until sundown to gather at the door of Simon's household for healing, because he would wait until sundown on the Sabbath day to do any work. So as they gather, Jesus doesn't hang out a shingle and say, I'm healing here, I'm here at Simon's, and come one, come all. No. He never shies away from healing. He never shies away from touching those who may not have been considered clean. And he never shies away from commanding demons and restoring the crowds to health. But, notice it's the crowds that seek Jesus. It's not Jesus who seeks the crowds. He does not begrudgingly give up his time, but he sees each individual in the crowd and meets their needs. We can imagine, having just seen the response of Simon's mother-in-law, that their response is both sharing the good news and using their restoration to return to the service of their community. When the next day dawns, Jesus draws apart to pray. While the action of the night before occurred in a private sphere, a domestic sphere, Jesus now withdraws to solitude. Interestingly, the Greek word for his withdrawal says that he withdrew to the wilderness. It's the same word that they used in Mark to describe Jesus withdrawing after his baptism into the wilderness for temptation. But geographically, there is no such wilderness surrounding Capernaum. There's no such wilderness within an easy walk from Capernaum. So figuratively, Jesus sought a retreat. He withdrew by himself. Now, lately, I've been reading a lot about practicing a pause. In our extremely busy and overscheduled lives, we're invited <coughs> to pause, take a breath, spend time restoring ourselves to who we really are. And Jesus reminds us that as we prepare to serve, we can take time to nurture our prayer life, to relish our relationships, to rest 
and to breathe deeply so that we can refill our cups and are able to share our gifts with renewed energy. Now, this short interlude does not last long. When his friends find him, rather than going back and doing the same work that he'd been doing the night before, after all, the crowds are gathered, and Jesus invites, Jesus was popular, but Jesus invites them instead to go out to the neighboring towns to proclaim that the kingdom of God is drawing near. You see, Jesus doesn't stay in his comfort zone. It'd be easy to stay in Capernaum. I mean, everybody's pretty happy with him. There are probably plenty of people who still need to be healed in Capernaum. There will continue to be crowds. Yet Jesus moves on to a preaching tour throughout Galilee and the surrounding regions. You see, after practicing that pause, that solitude, that retreat, Jesus is reminded of who he is and what his vision is. He was called to proclaim the good news of God to all of the nations. And he does not delay. In that way, he provides a process for his new friends. Address the immediate needs, take time to pause, to reconnect to God, to rest, to recommit yourself to your vocational calling, and then go out into the world and serve. We, as a busy 21st century people, may have overlearned the call to service. We may even be responding to service with service and gratitude like Simon's mother-in-law. And Jesus models that those who sit on our very doorstep, they have needs that are essential. But Jesus also models that we need to take time to pray, to recharge. Now we're entering into the, the season of Lent in about 10 days' time. Before you start to panic about taking something on, because we Presbyterians are good about taking on a spiritual discipline, or even giving something up, I would invite you first to pause. Perhaps that's the true opportunity of Lent, to pause, to reconnect to those relationships that have been neglected in our busyness. To rediscover that it's not what we do, but who we are that makes us beloved by God. And it's only when we can take some time, when we can quiet our heartbeats, when we can breathe deeply, calmly, that we have the capacity to serve in the way that God has called each and every one of us. It's only then that we can move out of our comfort zones and into the newness of life that God has dreamed for us. Thanks be to God. Amen. <coughs> Let us rise and affirm the faith of our baptisms. Affirm the faith that reminds us we are proud of with the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please sing with me, number seven.
generously of our gifts. We know that our financial gifts help to sustain and meet those most uh, urgent needs in our community. We also know that our gifts of time, talent, are as important for doing God's work in the world. Let us give thanks for the giving of our generous gifts as we sing the doxology. who have just returned in safe travels for our friend Daryl, who will be <laughs> traveling to be with Ana Maria in Brazil on Tuesday. Yes, Marie? It was a little too hard to see her yesterday. Yes, but thankful for our arts community at our Missoula Children's Theater. We had three of the children of the church in this. Um, Teddy was a pumpkin. Um, Carly was a beggar, and Maureen was the stepmother in Cinderella. <laughs> so, it was a great deal of fun. Other things we're thankful for. For all of these things, O oh Lord, we are truly thankful. You may be seated. Now our prayer is part of the prayers of communion, but I know that we have some prayer concerns. So I ask that we continue to pray for our friend Barb, who is in the hospital, feeling better, but still has a recovery ahead of her. So we continue to pray for Barb. We pray for Carol's cousin, Max Kovac, who has had a cancer reoccurrence. We pray for my friends and um, 
people who had gone to Guatemala with me when I went in 2002. We just lost one of the dearest men from um, that trip. So we pray for the family of Robert Trapper. Um, Robert was the quintessential gentleman on that trip and such a sweet man. And we feel his loss. Other prayer concerns. Yes, Tara. I have two friends who have recently been diagnosed with breast cancer. Oh. They're hopeful and treatments seem to have been administered. So we pray for two of two of Daryl's friends. Don and Dan, who've both been diagnosed with prostate cancer. Friends and beloved, come to this table because you want to celebrate. You want to celebrate care in illness, comfort in sorrow, healing beyond curing, peace and forgiveness, hope in times of fear and threat. <coughs> Come to this table because you claim your abundance, as culture defines it or as your heart knows it. Come to this table because you've discovered your own generosity and need to start giving. Come to this table because you're willing to be welcomed, even when it's awkward, and willing to welcome to the limits of your resources, even to offer welcome, knowing it may be rejected. Come to this teeter-totter table where the bakers and the starving touch elbows and hearts. And as we come to this table, we remember. We remember that Jesus Christ came from a culture of an oasis of hospitality. A raven feeding the prophet Elijah. Abigail hurrying to offer a feast. And a Passover meal for which everything stopped and all were fed. We remember that Jesus came from both family Sabbath evenings and the rule bending of grain plucked from a field when someone was hungry. We remember that Jesus remembered that on his first day in the healing business, he lifted up a woman from her fever, and she responded by serving everyone from the generosity of her wellness. Jesus sat and ate at her table. We remember that Jesus remembered that near the end of his ministry, he called a short man from a tree into a forgiveness so abundant that it became a meal for the least and the lost. Jesus sat and ate at his table, too. And we remember that Jesus knew when it was the last Passover how important healing and turning lives around was. And he blessed unleavened bread and poured wine and love freely, inviting us always to share with both brokenness and grace. Let us pray. Gentle host, rest upon us as you rested upon water and light, earth and creatures, human beings all in your image, and even the cooking pots and serving bowls of those who love you. Send your spirit of life and love and power and blessing upon your children, that this bread may be broken and gathered in love, and this come forward to give hope to all. Risen Christ, live in us that we may live in you. Breathe in us that we may breathe in you. Comfort us as we bring those in need of healing. As we bring Dan and Don. As we bring Max and Barb, as we bring the family of Robert Trotman and the family and friends of Rita Ferris, as we bring all of those to your table, trusting in your goodness, confident of your love, and knowing that you taught us to pray in a way that we can always pray even when we don't have other words. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory.
Jesus on the night of his arrest took bread and broke it. And he gave it to his disciples saying, take, eat. This is my body and it's been given for all of you. Every time you eat this bread, eat it in remembrance of me. In the same way after supper, he took the cup and said, this cup is the new covenant, sealed in my blood. Check for you with the forgiveness of sins. Every time you drink it, you do this in remembrance of me. So that every time we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the saving death of our risen Lord until he comes again. These are the gifts of God for all of the people of God. Thanks be to God. Friends, everyone is invited to the table. Um, I'm going to have my elder come up and help me. We, we have all, um, all gluten-free bread. Just take it. Whoops, turned off my thing too soon. Take it, dip it into the, um, the cup, and take it there, knowing that you are beloved and loved. The table is ready. God of grace, we give you thanks for the meal we have shared in your beloved community. As we have received the bread and cup throughout the, the gift of your grace, send us forth in your spirit to share these gifts with others, that they too may know and trust your presence, power, and love. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Beloved, sing with me. Hymn number 295, Go to the World.
friends, follow the model of Jesus. Do the work that is essential for the survival and the abundant life of all. Take time to pause and reconnect. And then, when you know who you are, and who you are as God's beloved people. Go without fear into the world, living out the mission to which God has called us. And you go with the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and in the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, now and always. Alleluia. Alleluia.